Hello, in this video, I'm going to tell you about arthrogenic muscle inhibition. So first off, what is it? Uh, it's an impairment of the muscles surrounding an injured or arthritic joint caused by ongoing neural activation deficit. So basically, if there's an, an injury to a joint or that joint could have arthritis, it's basically that the muscles that cross that joint and that act on that joint um, might have lower neural activation that might be somewhat inhibited. Um, so it occurs in muscles after an injury or surgery or in the case of arthritis. Uh, so it's neural inhibition of muscles that cross a joint or that cause that joint to move. Um, and it can interfere with the rehabilitation of that injury, and it can make the joint more vulnerable or prone to injury. So if we don't have muscles activating at their fullest extent, not that muscles should always be activating, but I mean that if they're not capable of activating as needed, then they're not capable of maintaining the uh, stability of the joint, and uh, it's not going to be able to protect it against further injury. It's also going to get in the way of rehabilitating whatever that injury was that caused the arthrogenic muscle inhibition to begin with. Uh, so it delays full recovery and can also cause long-term muscle atrophy and weakness because those muscles are not activating to a great enough extent. So what causes it? In short, the answer is we don't know. Um, so there are a couple ideas that have been proposed. So different research studies have come up with different ideas, but some of them are in conflict and it's not really clear what the cause is. Um, so some studies have said that it's caused by a decrease in spinal reflexes and the level of motor neuron activation. Other studies have said that there's a cortical contribution. So brain, um, so the cortex, meaning, so like your brain contribution to that inhibition, like the uh, higher level inhibition of the spinal cord and those reflexes. Um, but it is not clear what exactly the cause is, whether it's either of these two or both or neither or something else entirely. We just don't really know. Uh, so how does that affect how you rehabilitate an injury when there is arthrogenic muscle inhibition? Um, so it is important that rehabilitation includes strong voluntary contractions. So you want to encourage the muscles to activate to their fullest extent as much as possible. Um, so very early on during rehab, when that isn't necessarily possible, um, electric stim can be really useful. So muscle contraction can be stimulated by neuromuscular electric stimulation. Um, it is also advised that while receiving electric stim, um, that the patient also contract isometrically with the greatest amount of force possible. So if they're contracting isometrically the muscles that are being stimulated, um, then that is that does appear to be beneficial for basically teaching the muscles how to activate themselves correctly. Um, then in separate sessions from the e-stim, um, they can practice the strong voluntary muscle contractions, which as uh, rehabilitation progresses, those strong voluntary contractions should be getting stronger and stronger. So they might not be very strong in the beginning, uh, but hopefully they will become progressively stronger as those muscles rehabilitate. Uh, proprioceptive training also is thought to increase levels of voluntary muscle contraction. So that is also advisable for arthrogenic muscle inhibition. All right. Thanks so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.